Today I had no idea, but there is an eclipse and it's going to be 25% uh, hidden. So I found my old eclipse glasses and we'll see. It is starting, I can see it. Yeah. La la la, where are you? Clouds, of course. <laughs> So we've been wanting to make a review video about this lens here for the longest time now. And I think today is the day. Here we are. Can you believe? So this is the Rokinon slash Samyang 135mm uh, f2.0. And I think it's one of the best lenses for astrophotography. It fits on both full frame and crop sensor cameras. And although it is kind of bulky, you can take off the hood and attach it backwards for easier transportation. It's heavy, yes, but it just kind of makes sense for 135 millimeters. Yeah, so the lens uh, hood can be attached here to kind of block glares and light from moving in there. And uh, the good thing about it is you can just take it off and it's kind of like a reverse hood, so you can put it like this in reverse side and easily fit it in your bag so it doesn't take any extra space, which is nice. Um, we've taken several good pictures with this lens. Uh, we've started with Royal Fuji, which you can see here. And as you can see, it looks really well. It was with the Canon RA, so it's a, a full frame camera. And the stars were completely fine, even at f2. It's crazy because normally you would step it down to maybe f4, like in most lenses. Uh, but this one, despite being affordable, you can still use it at f2 wide open and the stars look completely fine. Just as great, yeah. Great. So with both a DSLR camera, mirrorless camera, and uh, even also cooled camera, uh, this lens was performing really well. So the weight, if you really want to know what exact weight it is, is... 1.83 pounds. Mm. So, you know, she's a, almost like a two pound weight. So if yeah. you wanted to work out with it, yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. You could do it and get a bit of a workout. And it can also go from f2 to f22 which is kind of crazy you don't want to do that i mean because f2 is also very fast so that's what we want for astro that way uh as long as it doesn't mess up the stars it's it's fine so uh the reason that this lens is so beloved is because the stars look so good at f2 but you'll definitely need a star tracker at this focal length to get the best results yeah, so for this focal lens, uh, definitely a star tracker. You could technically not use one uh, because of f2 is super fast. So if you want to, you can try taking a picture of, let's say, the Andromeda Galaxy or the Orion Nebula, wide open, untracked, and do very short exposures. But you would have to constantly uh, reframe your target like every few seconds, every few minutes. So it would be a pain. Uh, so definitely get a star tracker for this lens. What's the longest time that it can go untracked before it produces trails? Yeah, so if you want to go on track, uh, let's do some math here. So with the APS-C sensor, so a cropped sensor, you would do 500 divided by 1.6 times the focal length of the lens, so 135, and you will get the max exposure time in seconds, roughly, okay? This is a 500 rule, so it's really rough. So it would, do, it would be about 2.31 seconds, so round it down to 2 seconds. So that would be 2 seconds max uh, with a cropped sensor camera. Now with a full frame camera, you would do 500 divided by the focal length of the lens, that's it. And so it would be 3.7 seconds. So round it down to three seconds. That was a lot of math. <laughs> I get lost, but I'm sure we have it written in a blog post. <laughs> so with the tracker, you'll be able to take exposures as long as you want to. Although at F2, you don't need to take super long exposures. For Row Fuji, we took three minutes of exposures and that was more than enough. And we spent three hours on it to get this result. And it was a good balance of exposure and integration time. So the stars on the corner, let's talk about um, the real future stars in full frame. So what makes this lens specifically amazing for Astro is that it can be used wide open, like we said, uh, at F2 without any distortions in your corners. Um, most affordable lenses when used for the night sky 
need to be stepped down to around f4, sometimes f2.8 uh, for the stars to look round all over your frame. But this means sacrificing speed and when going from let's say f2 to f4, it means you'll have to spend double the time on your target to gather the same data. So we have used this lens with several cameras, uh, both crop sensor and full frame. And we're always just surprised at how it looks in the corners. Like we only shoot at f2 using this lens and that's it. Yeah. So uh, we also tried this lens for lunar uh, photography. So we took a picture of the moon uh, from our backyard. And as you can see here, you definitely have to crop because the field of view is still um, pretty wide, even though it's a telephoto lens. But once you crop it, you, I mean, it's a good picture of the moon. It's uh, still crisp enough. Uh, obviously, if you really want to dig into moon photography, you probably want a telescope or a, a bigger yeah, lens, like 300. Bigger, yeah. um, but that's, that's still good. And then we have uh, used several accessories with this lens, which we uh, like using for Astro. For example, here, uh, this Astronetics, which allows us to use this lens kind of like a telescope. We have a, a focuser on the bottom here, a guide scope here. We can attach the ASI Air on the side, and um, that's just like a telescope. So the lens just goes right in it. In the middle, it, uh, it has a hinge, yeah, so, so it opens cool. up. And then we also have uh, used a um, astronomy camera, so the ASI uh, 2600MC for the Christmas tree and rosette nebulae. And for this, we had to buy this ZWO um, adapter. So to attach this DSLR lens to our cooled camera. So this, I think, is under 100 bucks. And it also comes with a filter uh, slider. Which so is so cool. crazy. I, every time you do that, it always like scares it me. It's like, magnetic. So it's magnetic. Cool. So like the, when, he's, when he takes it out, I'm just like... <gasps> yeah, it's pretty cool. But you know, when, when the filter is there, please be careful. It is very simple to attach, like just like this. And it goes straight to the uh, cooled camera. And lastly, one more accessory we use is this 3D printed, like super cheap, uh, batten of mask, which fits perfectly on the lens here, just like that. So if we don't want to uh, use the automatic focuser, sometimes so very quickly we just use this mask, and um, that's just because perfectly fine. But you know, and the that the batten of mask is relatively inexpensive. And as you can see, you can also get constellations. Uh, we have Cassiopeia here, or as Antoine says, Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia. <laughs> so it's, a, it's good to shoot. Um, it's good for several constellations, not many, because they have to be small enough to fit in the frame. Yes. But Cassiopeia with a full frame camera fit perfectly with this, so it was a, a nice fit. But if you like shooting constellations, uh, that's a great one for medium to small constellations. Right. The Galactic Course Ultimate Bundle gives you hundreds of lessons covering all types of astrophotography, as well as processing guides for getting the very best out of your data, all in one place. You might wonder why pay when you can find free tutorials on YouTube. I have spent years building the Galactic Course to make it the absolute best possible astrophotography resource on the internet. No more wasting time bouncing around random YouTube videos. Everything you need is right there on your dashboard, always updated. And there is so much more than that. Courses have videos, detailed text, downloadables, a glossary, discounts, and are linked to the Galactic Lounge forum as well as Discord, where you can get help, share your pics, and interact with other members at any time. The Galactic course is designed with learning in mind. No fluff, no annoying music, just clear teaching designed to make you the best astrophotographer you can be. Don't just trust me, also trust the hundreds of other members who have reviewed the content. Join one of the bundles now or start with any course, link in the description. Almost all popular targets will be a perfect fit for this. Yes. Except... Yes, except small galaxies and planetary nebulae. They just won't work with this. Yeah, like, um, for example, M57, which is a tiny ring nebula, that's not a good one for this, for this uh, lens. But most nebulae that are large are perfect for this. But yeah, I think this is probably one of the best possible lenses you can get for Astro that's affordable. Totally worth it. Um, and I think it's much better than some of the more expensive lenses. Uh, so lastly, to conclude, it has a fast aperture of f2. We said that a bunch of times, and really that's what makes it so great for astrophotography. The focal length is 135mm, 
which is ideal for very large nebulae. And it's one of the most popular DSLR lenses for astrophotography. It has an affordable price, making it perfect for a beginner uh, or someone on a budget. It can also be found used online for even cheaper, so go on eBay or anywhere Search online, it. and I'm sure you can find it for cheap. <laughs> yeah, I think the only con is like it's a bit bulky and heavy, but besides that, I mean, that's not a problem. I mean, is that really bad for what it does? I don't think so. I think for it's how not an much, issue. Yeah, how much you can get out of it? Not really, no. And also, yeah, I forgot one last thing. The end here is flat. It's not like those weird, like, shapes. It's curved. And yeah, it's super flat, so you can easily put like a, a flat panel on top, or like if you have to do a, to take flat at the end of the night, it's very simple because it's flat. Perfect. Um, and then, yeah, that's uh, it for this lens. I think it's uh, a super good lens, and um, don't go buying super expensive, like thousands of dollars lenses. Yeah, let us know if you uh, also use this lens for Astro, and if you have any questions, we have a written post available online with uh, more information and pictures. And so go check it out. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace, guys. Peace, guys.